Admittedly, I should have done this a long, long time ago. Get access to these, because if they break, your boat's toast. These are now polished, passivated, and ready for installation. It feels really good to have a project finished. When you buy an older sailboat, it can be full of hidden dangers. It's your responsibility as the new owner of that boat to find these issues and fix them before they become dangerous to you or to others. A common failure on older neglected sailboats is the rigging fails and the boat is dismasted. And a common component of the rigging that will fail is the notorious chain plate. This simple piece of metal can fail at any time, and when it does, the consequences can be fatal. So how do you know when you need to replace yours? And where do you even start? I'm feeling a little overwhelmed right now because we've got so many projects going on on the boat. Uh, with the new cushions in the boat, I have to go around and make sure that all the leaks are taken care of before any of them get uh, wet and damp and moldy. So the water's coming in through this uh, chain plate fitting. Um, and if I'm gonna go through the effort of replacing the chain plate fitting and rebedding it, I might as well just go ahead and pull the chain plate because I don't know how old those chain plates are. I have no record of them ever being replaced. They should be replaced every 10 to 25 years depending on the condition that they're in. So I don't think that any of the previous owners ever really took the time to thoroughly inspect the chain plates, um, which means it's now my job. I've gotten all but one of them exposed and the last one I need to get to is behind uh, some cabinetry and because we're doing the beadboard project at the same time as like all these other projects I've decided that I want to go ahead and combine that project with uh, the chain plate project right now I don't know if you can see that, but there's a ton of water. Ew. Admittedly, I should have done this a long, long time ago. <laughs> Probably the most frustrating part about any project on the boat is when you take something apart and you discover problems that are uh, deeper and more complex than you were prepared for, uh, such as extensive rot. God, is this project annoying. <laughs> All right, now it's actively raining and you can see the water is streaming down here. That's why this is uh, all dark. And it's been sitting there and rotting out all this wood right here. Well, you uh, start with one project and you end up with 15. <laughs> so, <laughs> where are we now? <laughs> this morning's project is to get the uh, chain plates out on the lowers. So there's that one, one over there, and two over there. Then after that is all done, hopefully there's enough time to clean up the mess that I've made because this boat is getting nasty really quick. With the lower chain plates, I need to take them to a machine shop to get remade. Um, they're 316 stainless, um, so it's not a super expensive material, but it can definitely add up really quickly if I'm not careful. <laughs> I really don't like how much the uh, mast is shaking right now, um, so I'm going to keep an eye on it for a minute before I continue. And if something were to happen, then you know we lose part of the stability. The good thing about this boat is that it is a keel step mast, um, so the mast is still technically supported uh, by the deck itself. But there's something to be said about you know taking my boat to a rigger or. A, you know, having the mast pulled down as well, that would make this go a lot faster probably, but that would cost a whole hell of a lot more than uh, just doing this right now. So while Courtney is working on her stuff right now, um, I'm gonna go ahead and start loosening these bolts. 
I can't take them off off until Courtney gets over here and helps with the, uh, the removal process because otherwise they're gonna go straight to the water. Um, but I can at least get them started, get them loose, and uh, try to work the sealant out uh, from behind the uh, chain plate. Courtney's outside uh, getting ready to catch the bolts as I take them off. We're gonna start with the top one and go down. Can you push down? Got it. Great. So the chain plate is out. And now we just gotta do that three more times. I think the future design of boats, they should be on the outside. Is this the right way of doing it? Probably not. Is it the convenient way of doing it? Absolutely not. Is it working? We'll see. <laughs> Adding lashings to hold the shrouds made sense at the time because we didn't know how long it would take to get our new chain plates made and reinstalled. I would personally recommend it as a backup in case a high windstorm blows through and the remaining shrouds are compromised in any way. Let us know what you think. Is the extra effort worth it? So that kind of keeps it from wobbling around and I can even uh, tighten down on the turnbuckles a little bit. Uh, that'll help just make sure that it goes nowhere. Now we gotta go do the other side of the boat. So I've been fighting the studs on the starboard side. Um, I've been trying to work on them with a Dremel and then somebody mentioned on Facebook, uh, why don't you just use a nut splitter? So I went to AutoZone and got one and like, how did I not know that this was a tool? I've spent like three hours on these stupid studs. Instead of grinding them down to that, I could have just been breaking them in half. I should have my engineering degree taken away. That's a joke. Don't do that, please. Anyway, uh, let's get back to splitting nuts. So I've already pretty much destroyed the tip on this um, without actually getting either of these nuts off. So I think I'm back to plan A of drinking pool. So today kind of feels like a waste, but I can't complain because I got three chain plates out so far and I'm really hoping that number four doesn't actually uh, put up a fight like number three did. It is really laid out, but I got all four. That took way longer than I thought it would. So now I'm waiting to hear back from vendors on the uh, price to see if I can get these done economically. Um, and one of our friends is also doing this project at the same time, so we're hoping we can get kind of a bulk discount. And once we get them back, I'll uh, show you how to put them in. My goal for today during lunch is to measure these as accurately as I can. I've got my calipers, I've got all of the chain plates up here. Um, I need to create what's called a flat pattern. That is what will actually get cut out um, using either a water jet or a laser cutter, depending on which one is cheaper. Um, and then after that, I'll be able to put together a bend pattern uh, to determine how to actually bend these into the shape. So far, just comparing them side by side, it looks like they're all the same flat pattern, which is gonna help us with cost. Um, if they were all different, then that would actually increase the cost because every single one needs a special cutting program. So in this lighting, you can actually see the crevices that were uh, being formed behind the chain plates. Those are really why we're replacing them uh, to begin with. They become a stress concentrator uh, if you're not paying attention to what uh, what's going on there. All the loading will concentrate on that uh, spot in the stainless and uh, cause it to fracture there over time. So if your boat has chain plates that you have not actually taken out and physically inspected in a long time, this is your sign to do it. Um, you don't know what's happening behind them and it's a really good idea to have access to them and check them every now and then. Unfortunately, some boat builders uh, will put them in places where you can't actually get to them. So one of the differences between Josh's boat and my boat is that his chain plates are bolted into the hull which makes it, easy, makes it easier to remove in case you have to repair it. Um, on Island Pack, it's their fiberglass into the hole, and it's a little bit of a pain in the ass because then you have to cut them out <laughs> when you have to replace and repair them. And uh, if your boat is one of those boats, 
I would seriously consider working on a way to get to your chain blades. Um, if that means cutting fiberglass, if that means cutting up your beautiful cabinetry work, um, get access to these because if they break, your boat's toast. So as it turned out, splitting the cost of tooling between us and our friend Travis was a fraction of the cost of paying to have the new plates formed in a machine shop. Since our boats are very similar, all of our chain plates use the same flat pattern with slight variations to the hole sizes. We bought a bending brake that allows us to easily and quickly form the chain plates to match the original profiles. Coming up with the bend patterns was as easy as setting the flats next to the originals and carefully transferring the bend lines over with a sharpie. And we're kind of kicking ourselves because this is really easy and we should have been doing this years ago. Um, the cost of actually doing this project, you want to get in a shot? Oh, I was going to show you. So here's the one for him that hasn't been made and I'm just copying the one he's doing. So yeah, yeah that's how close they are. Yeah. So. Um, had we known how easy this would be, we would have done this years ago, and this project has kept both of us from taking our boats offshore because we knew that there were issues. Um, and yeah, a lot of missed opportunities there, but uh, we're taking care of it now, and that's what matters. By slowly bumping the flat patterns, we found that we were able to match the angles required precisely, and we couldn't have been happier with the results. So a few more pumps? Uh, we need one more degree, so it's, I think, about maybe a little over half a pump. I wouldn't quite do a full one. Now we're right on. Perfect. Yeah. On mm -hmm. to the next bend, our super light bend. Yeah. We're on day two of Operation Clean Up the Chain Plates, and we finally have one polished chain plate and all of these to go. We're working on getting this up and running so that we can expedite the process because this is taking way too long. Ah, here in a moment, will be our moment of truth. <laughs> okay, in about uh, 30 seconds, we did what previously took about 15 minutes. The whole polishing process took about two to three weeks to complete, filled with late nights grinding and sanding and the occasional polishing beer. We tried a lot of different grits of sandpaper and polish to get the best results and ultimately found that the generic instructions found online are ultimately the best. That does not mean this task was any less tedious. See your reflection? <laughs> if you have the money to hire somebody to polish your chain plates, we would all recommend going that route. All right, I've got six chain plates fully polished and one waiting to be bent uh, when I pull the backstay off. But these six are now going to get cleaned and passivated. Um, I won't be here for that part. Travis is going to take care of that with all of his as well. Um, they're just going to get put in the dishwasher and then boiled in a pot of citric acid for a couple of minutes. Um, but when we come back and do this one, I'll film that particular one. That way um, you won't miss out on the process, but these are good to go. So there's a couple different ways that you can passivate stainless steel. Um, and all of them work more or less the same. The goal here is that we're going to dissolve any free iron off the surface of the chain plate. And then when we take it out of the bath, it'll leave just a chromium oxide layer that will pre uh, prevent any rust from forming in the future. That is, as long as we don't disturb that chromium oxide. We're gonna uh, wanna wash this with just dish soap and water, and then do a distilled water uh, rinse on that to make sure that there's no minerals or anything from the tap water. We're gonna be making up a citric acid bath using just normal citric acid that you can get from the grocery store in the canning aisle. Um, this stuff has to be at about a 4 to 10 percent by weight ratio. So I've got a pound and a half of citric acid I'm going to be adding to my bucket. Between two and three gallons that should get us right in the middle of our ratio that we want. And the ratio will determine how long this needs to sit in the bath for. If you can do this with heat with like a large stainless steel pot or something like that, that would be ideal. 
Um, one important thing though is if you're using a pot like that, you don't want to mix different brands of stainless together. Uh, so if you're using 316 steel for your chain plate, you want to make sure that your pot is also 316 and not some lower grade like a 204 or something like that. If it's a different grade, that might actually make this problem worse. Because we're using a plastic bucket, I don't have to worry about that. Okay, so we're at a 5% ratio by weight of citric acid to water, so it's right within our range that we want. It's on the low end, so we're going to have to let it go a little bit longer. Um, I'm going to let it sit here for about 30 minutes, run to the store and get another gallon of uh, distilled water because we will need this to rinse it off afterwards. So we'll check back in after lunch. Taking it out, first look, looks pretty good. Uh, you know that this doesn't work if you have rust on it as soon as you take it out of the bath. That means that you have another issue going on. Um, it can like flash rust on you if you do this wrong, so um, I don't see any rust anywhere, so I think this is good. We're going to rinse it off now with some distilled water. I'm even going to wipe it off with a cloth, a clean cloth. All right, the last and most important step of this process is that this has to air dry. So I'm going to go set this down on a clean cloth uh, somewhere where it will be undisturbed and allowed to air dry. These are now polished, passivated, and ready for installation. So um, we're going to match these to their bolt holes and uh, get them installed with a bunch of 4200 uh, glue. And then we're basically done. I've applied some 4200 to all the areas around where the chain plates are gonna sit. We have about an hour to get the chain plates in now. Courtney has the carriage bolts with 4200 on them on the outside. Um, I'm going to be finagling the chain plates down below. She's going to be ready to push the carriage bolts in. Uh, we're just gonna go one at a time and try to coordinate once Courtney is ready. Thumbs up. Okay, great. All right, sweetie, I'm ready. Okay, I got it. You can let go. All right, I've got it lined up. You can push the uh, bolt through. Yeah, go ahead and give it a tap. Okay, that's fine. It feels really good to have a project finished. Um, the only thing left to do is I need to go back and the ones that we did previously, I need to put a little bit more sealant on um, before it rains again. So anyway, I'm Josh from Two Half Itches. Uh, stay tuned for whatever it is that we come up with next. Bye. So now that the project's done, how do you feel about the boat? A little safer on anticipation, and it's something that should have been done a lot earlier. Mm -hmm.